back to the episode. It is right to expect to be seen and to be heard and for people to accept, like, objectively, these are, like, failings of mine. They don't mean they don't make me a failure, but they are, you know, itemized. I've been the lightning rod for the family and your sense of, like, equilibrium. I'm not here to just be the load bearer for, like, the lightning striking the family so no one else has to deal with it. I, I need to be seen. I have needs. Some of us love what we do. Uh, that's part of our identity. And we want to do the most for our careers, for the company, for our sense of self, for our sense of accomplishment, for a dopamine hit. Plenty of reasons why people don't just do their 40 hours per week. Like, you're not a bad person if you're quiet quitting, you're just doing your job. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Live Herself Podcast. My name is Joy Agude. I'm your host, and I'm ridiculously excited to introduce you to someone who is a dear friend, but also someone I absolutely respect from the core of me. This person is just so special to me and he's an inspiration. The work that he does is amazing, but also how he does it. He's one of those people that you just sort of think there is just nobody else like him. The way he thinks and his work ethic, you know, his ability to reflect on really deep situations and just be open and vulnerable, but still be this go-getter and this kind of trailblazer. I just, I'm so in awe of him. His name is Jason Toure. So we met back in 2017 or 2018 within Huckletree. So by now you'd have seen Gabriella Hersham's episode with me. She's the CEO and co-founder of Huckletree. And I was blessed. I had the privilege of having her on Life Herself podcast. It is within that space in London that I also met Jason. Jason is the CEO of Black Unicorn, which is an amazing organization. He has a newsletter with thousands of people on it. His network is crazy. He's also taken up roles like being the VP of people in so many spaces and worked with companies like Huckletree, WeWork, Glossier, Girlfriend Collective. He really, his CV is so colorful. And once upon a time, he was also a lawyer. It's just crazy. But I can't imagine him doing anything different to what he does now. He's so well fitted for the role. And in today's episode, we dig deep. We go beyond this you know, this amazing person that he is on the outside, the roles that he's taken and how colorful his life is and how amazing his life is. And we go beyond that and dig into his childhood, his family, his background. So within the Huckle Tree space where we met, I was his physio actually, because I was the in-house physiotherapist for Huckle Tree at the time. And so Jason had an injury and that's how we met. He came and booked in a physiotherapy session with me and we had so much time to really bond and dig deep and talk about so many situations. And we realized from the get-go that actually we had so many similarities. One of the things that we really had in common is this trauma of being the provider in the family, the one who puts everyone first, the one who puts themselves on the back burner, the one who actually is just not even allowed to say, I'm struggling this month, you know, I'm I'm suffering this month or I need help this month. And you know what I really love about that is nothing about him or myself, really, when I talk about this experience, nothing about either of us, you know, makes it seem like I'm the victim. There's no denying how other people could have been better, especially if it's like a parent or like a a family situation. There's no denying that, you know, people could have done better. He kind of goes into detail about how he also played a role, you know, and I say he, but also me. We've played roles in that. So I really love the self-reflection aspect, the objectivity, like just being able to take yourself out the situation and look in and be like, okay, it wasn't just a them problem. I was part of this. So I don't want to spoil it for you, but I just want you to know that this is probably one of those episodes where you need a cup of tea. You really need a cup of tea for this one because it is deep. It is raw. It is reflective. It is honest. It's beautiful. It's sad. (laughs) It's also happy. And I'm just so proud of him. I'm honestly so honored. I feel so privileged to be one of his friends. You know, he just has this beautiful brain and this amazing intellect. I just don't even know. I don't even have the words, but I'm so happy above all to share him with 
with you in this episode. So we're going to get into the episode. But before we do, please subscribe on YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're listening to this on any podcast platform, Apple, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Spotify, wherever you're listening to this on, do me a favor, please follow and please leave a review. I would be so very grateful. And I also have a newsletter. So check out the link in the show notes if you're listening on a podcast platform. But if you're watching on YouTube, then check out the link in the description box. So you can sign up to my newsletter and we can just keep in touch throughout the week whilst I release like little pieces of I don't know, great things for you. (laughs) Without further ado, let's get into the episode. Hey, Jason, welcome to Life for Self podcast. How are you? (laughs) I'm doing really good. I'm doing really good. Yeah. I'm like super excited to, to be on the pod. Yeah. Me too. I feel like you're the hardest person to track down, to be honest, because (laughs) literally I'm just like, okay, when are we doing this? And you're like, let's check. But half the time you're not even in the country anyway. So I'm just like, that that does present back. (laughs) I mean, like it's it's 50-50. It depends, depends where I go, it depends on the vibe. Um Yeah. yeah. I think um yeah, like I'm um, glad to have kind of got it figured out and, and made and made it work. But I was always going to make it happen, obviously. And yeah. yeah, super cool. I honestly couldn't have seen season three, season two through. That's a mouthful. I honestly couldn't have seen season two through. Oh, that doesn't without, lot happening. Yeah, there's a lot <laughs> happening in that one sentence um, <laughs> without having you on um, for lots of different reasons. I mean, obviously we're friends. So for those that don't know, I know Jason off of like... On, online, offline, 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 in I, real life. IRL. IRL. <laughs> IRL, in real life. But also professionally, I'm such a such a huge fan of the path that you've chosen. And I'm just so excited to dig in. So today's episode is going to be a bit of a mishmash, really. It's going to be like, you already know, it's going to be like one of our normal conversations, but with people listening. <laughs> Literally, I was going to say, like, it's, it's going to be fly on the wall of like the most like stream of consciousness, like vibes. I, th- I think it's going to be really good. I think our conversations are great I um, honestly yeah, do I, I feel like I do I feel like every conversation we have needs to be a podcast episode like the last time we caught up was just magical we literally spent how long was it <laughs> the day. just the whole day so like if you know Soho Farmhouse right Jason is a member and every time he's there he's like oh I'm gonna be there and I'm like this guy's never in the country so I might as well get my ass up there <laughs> Go and catch up. The last time we actually caught up was just so magical. Like it literally felt like we, I mean, we did spend the whole day together, but like we spoke the whole day. Like we just had so much to talk about and just so many different things. And I was driving home going, I could do that all again. (laughs) (laughs) I could do this all day. Again. (laughs) Another day. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. That was a vibe. It was really good. But the hilarious thing was, by the way, I was leaving and I, I realized I'd run out of petrol. And there was nowhere open. I was just like, do I go back to Soho Farmhouse? Do they have, do they just go, oh yeah, come on in. We have rooms. <laughs> I'm like, how does this work if it goes south? But I See, found I Petra Station. That, I'm, I'm glad because I was going to say, you didn't mention that to me. I didn't know no, that. I didn't. I'm, it's the first I'm hearing of that. So Yeah, I was freaking out massively. <laughs> but quietly, like giving giving like duck swan energy, like right. slapping away under the water. But like, <laughs> right. chill, but I'm like, no, calm. it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. (laughs) (laughs) It's fine. It's cool. It's great. Right. But seeing as I know you really well, IRL, there are a few people that may not know you. And I'm I'm just so excited to shout about you to my audience today. So for those that don't, can you give them a little intro to who you are, what you do, um, and this amazing space that you're taking in our world? Oh, okay. Um, Should I keep it professional? Should I talk about like focus on the work stuff or... You can do Tell you about either. my likes, dislikes, you know. Tell, tell um, me all. Tell me all. Maybe I might even learn a few new things, right? <laughs> tell me everything. <laughs> um, how would I intro myself? So yeah, um, my name's Jason Ture. Um, I'll keep it like professional to start because that's easy. And then I'll kind of in the background think about what else to say about myself. So I'm the founder of a company called Black Unicorn and a bit of a mixed bag like BU has basically been a consulting firm that's the name under which I've been doing consulting focused on people and talent mostly working with consumer startups in the US so companies like Bumble and Harry's and Glossier and those kinds of startups and yeah like in that world a little bit different to HR 
you're kind of plug in and do a lot of work around workplace culture and trying to make the experience of working within that company sync up with with the brand and its values and its outlook um and just strategically how do you organize this team how do you scale how do you grow when do you grow who do you hire what is your strategy it's kind of the more interesting elements of making sure people are happy and engaged at work and um, focusing on diversity and equity and inclusion and all of these cool initiatives. Um, a lot of the work I've been doing has been hiring. So sort of finding people who have experience in this space and then matching them to new and exciting opportunities um, within like other early stage companies um, popping up. And going forward, it's we're sort of evolving it into a network designed to connect and support consumer startup people specifically. So it's a lot of people who work for these kinds of companies, especially in, in North America and in the US, um, and have built careers working in this space. And yeah, notoriously, there's sort of a lack of support when it comes to um, access to opportunities and being able to discover like-minded people or people who work in similar careers. Um, so there's kind of no centralized place for all of that. Um, but a big part of it is just, I think, the kinship that exists. Like my big bet has been that if you work in that space, you probably come from like a third culture background or an eldest sibling or have a real sensitivity to like injustice and inequity and a bit of big main character energy. There's probably a reason you want to work at a company that has big potential, but no one, like your parents haven't heard of yet until they see a commercial for it, of, you know, a year or two down the line, like, oh, WeWork or Casper or Away or Glossier. You're like, uh-huh, yep, that's what I've been doing. Um, <laughs> so kind of like connecting those people and, and helping to build the puzzle around us. Um, so that's like professionally what I do now when I've worked for a bunch of startups like that as head of people or, or head of talent. So kind of have that experience before that. Beyond that, just I'm just a baby boy. You know, I'm just oh, trying to stay hydrated. I knew that was coming. <laughs> I'm just I'm just a baby boy. I'm just trying to stay hydrated, try to moisturize, be a good boyfriend, and partner, <laughs> be a good friend. I, I struggle with all of these things. I'm sure I don't nail it most of the time, but um and also just to reference your name, like to seek and have joy in this life. Oh, like, hello. Seek <laughs> so and have me. Seek and you shall find. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, need to I, do that. I honestly could listen to you talk about who you are and what you do all day. I honestly just feel like beyond your energy, beyond your just the amazingness that you are. Um, and, you know, we spoke a little bit about this last time when I was like, in my circle, if people said to me, who is that one person that is just doing above and beyond, like just like, it's almost as if you've created this, this role for yourself. I know that there are different heads of people and heads of talent and stuff, but quite frankly, I didn't even know anything about that until I met you. I did not know that there was such a role within companies. And then beyond that, I'm just like, oh, okay, well, well then what do you do? And then when you talk about it, I'm like, there is nobody better to do a job like this <laughs> than Jason. That, that, that's like big praise. Thank you. Like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to get better at like accepting compliments and praise. Like so, I'm, I accept that into my heart. Thank you. Um, and big praise. Like you know some incredible people, even just in terms of like you know people in your network that you talk about. Um, and me being one of them. Like I really appreciate that. And yeah, it's kind of wild. I think. It's kind of a newish discipline because traditionally you have like HR, human resources or human capital or whatever, whatever dystopian phrase you want to use to this like human capital, like <laughs> a bad way to describe people. Right. Um, but there it's like real emphasis on sort of risk mitigation and compliance. That's the focus. It's like a, fin a traditional finance role or legal role focused on the people that work for the company. And I think a lot of these like growing startups, especially the consumer ones, because they're very like people focused, like... Facebook and all those guys matter like great companies, but it's still math. It's still mm -hmm. code. It's still, mm -hmm. here's a utility. The utility works off you mm -hmm. go. Mm -hmm. But like these brands that have more of a human, you know, they're still brand, you know, it's products and beauty products and, you know, um, stuff that like, you know, it's day to day, but at the same time makes you feel something. And um, yeah, they tend to attract people with a bit more sensitivity to like, okay, what are we doing? How are we doing it? Are we sort of keeping up with what we're promising to be? And yeah, I think a lot of those companies have pioneered, okay, we need to scale, we need to grow, we need to do it strategically. Um, we also need to have our compliance and all that stuff buttoned up. But how do you make this? It's kind of, you could break it down to how do you attract, hire, 
develop and retain the best talent who sort of match our mission and our values. Like that's kind of the role in a nutshell. Um, and yeah, I think I'm the kind of person that like, I just want everyone to win. Like that's generally my vibe. Like I'm very fine, like-minded people and I'm, yeah. How do we all win? How do we all build around us? How do we build what we needed? Like it's very much my vibe, which I think connects quite well to what I, what I do. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. You know, you wanting everyone to win and even just from what you've said and my knowledge of what you do, the two things have stood out to me that one, you're looking to put the right people in the right roles. You're kind of looking to match these amazing people to company values and and essentially just make sure it works for them, the recruiters, but it also works for the person being recruited. So you're the person in the middle trying to make sure. But then on the other hand, you're also trying to make sure internally the people who are there and the culture that they are creating and all of their values as uh, staff, if you like, matches with the external picture that's being painted. Is that is that a good way to kind of sum it up? Yeah, like that's that's a really good distillation of it for sure. And you need to, like, I think if you're building that kind of company, that's the key component of your success like if you don't you can say this of anywhere if you don't have the right people but like there's a little bit more to it than just how good is how clean is your code what you know again using that tech example like do you have clean code do you use these languages like it's a bit more rigid whereas do you have the outlook and the experiences that could help us kind of create better products and services for people um informed by your experience informed by what you've seen there being a lack of what you've experienced yourself as not, you know, I imagine obviously Rihanna's done her her thing at Fenty, for example, like Fenty Beauty and and Savage, but like you, you bet people who worked on Fenty are like, yeah, like I come from a background where even as a darker skinned person, woman, otherwise like, yeah, I, I I know what it is not to be seen. I know what it is not to, for my shade or something that matches my um, skin tone to be available. And I know how that makes me feel and how frustrating that is. Like, that's going to inform, all right, how do we build a brand and a product and a, a sort of service and experience that people need? Like, How do we evolve beyond what's out there now? Mm. So you kind of need people to see the world a little differently or have experiences that can help drive that. Yeah. And, and so where, number one, where do you find those people? And two, is there, I mean, are these companies intentionally looking for people like you or you having to like convince them to be like hey these are the things that I'm pretty sure you're not thinking about right now because a lot of these companies are thinking about how do we make money and how do we you know are you having to carve out that role for yourself or is there like is there a lot of demand for it like are they actively going we need a head of people we need to make sure our internal is reflecting the external and then if once that that box has been ticked and the job is given to you, then you're just like, okay, fuck, how do I find all these? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, how does bet. that work? Like, literally. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think like a lot of like early and growth stage companies, like, yeah, they everyone wants, you hit a tipping point, I think. I think when you're super early, people want external help from someone like me, which, and I'll come in and do consulting work and that kind of thing. And then, especially if you've raised like investment, you hit a certain point where it's like, okay, cool. The objective now is to like grow the number of people who work here exponentially like could be 15 of us within two years we want it to be 100 150 of us so it's like how do we even do that like how like that is so much change and so much growth and who do you hire and when and how and how do you make the chemistry work so i think with um early and growth stage companies like it's fairly easy and then you get to like companies that are quite mature and they just need somebody who's like kind of steering the ship from a people strategy perspective anyway and i think the way that i do it like my background helps like i think having i've worked for some fairly big names in that world like some of the um i call them like the among the mount rushmore um for like more american listeners like the, you know the old presidents in that mountain like you know you've got spotify we work casper glossier bumble like these are all that those names from from that kind of era and I've worked for like two of them and worked with most of the others, like as a consultant. So it helps me to have a bit of a, I've got a sort of depth of perspective, having been in with a lot of these companies that have hyperscaled and grown like crazy, but also a very wide perspective from sort of mapping out all the companies in this space and building community and connecting with so many people and introducing them to opportunities. So I kind of get 
not just deep at WeWork or Casper or, you know, Girlfriend Collective or whatever. It's kind of like a wider perspective that helps me to, I don't know, it just gives me, it kind of gives me an outlook that I think people and companies respond to. And then it's a case of if you're growing, if you're an early stage company wanting to grow, you've raised an investment, you're building like, you know, your company out, you kind of want people who have been there and done it. It's a little bit like, I always use like the example of even like Premier League football or whatever, like you want somebody who's played in the same country, in the same league, in a similar position or system. Because then it's like, cool, like you're almost bringing more to the table. Like that specificity just makes everything so low lift um, and just like levels up what the company can do. So having that web of like everyone who's worked in this space, I think that's the thing that everyone's like, okay, you get it. You understand how people in this space work and what they need. And also, you know how to find them. You have that network and those are the people we want maybe sort of, you know, tweaked for whether we're a beauty company or whether we're a travel company or whether we're a food and beverage company, like do we want someone with that experience or something else? So it's, yeah, it's, it's, I think at the moment, like this year, like it's been a little more like, I don't know, like up and down with like the economy and things like that. But as a consultant, it still kind of works out for me in terms of interest just because people still need the work done. They just might not want to hire somebody, which works for me because I'm building my own thing and not really looking to plug into any companies like full time right now anyway. Yeah. So are you somebody who enjoys looking after your body? If you didn't already know through the London Physio, my very own brand, I have now released some fitness products that are practical. If you're somebody that travels and someone who loves working out at the gym or you love working out at home and you love using your own products, then these will definitely be for you. We have all sorts from double-sided gym mats to foam rollers, to massage balls, to resistance bands, the long ones, the short ones, the looped ones, the glutes bands, weighted skipping ropes, we have them all. So if you are someone who really enjoys looking after your body and you enjoy having lightweight products that you can take with you wherever you are, then these will definitely be for you. So if you want to get your hands on any of our products, my Linktree link is linktr.ee forward slash joy agude that's j-o-y october golf umbrella delta echo where you'll find all the links to each and every product i hope you enjoy using them and if you do don't forget to leave us a review back to the episode i actually want to talk about black unicorn for a bit but um i just want to note two things so first of all we met in a space like that <laughs> we we should we actually talk about how we met <laughs> we should we should contextualize that that's we actually should. important <laughs> we should i honestly feel like and and funny enough i don't know if you know this but um well we haven't released it yet by the time this episode Ooh. comes out it will be out but then the episode before you is with gabriella hersham i i know her I I know know. <laughs> no no no, what, I know, I know you know her. i'm like i don't know if you know that i did an episode with her is what i'm saying no, no, no. <laughs> no i was kidding no um, i think you mentioned that you're going to yeah and that's really awesome yeah Honestly, Incredible. our conversation was just beautiful. I can't, I, by the time this comes out, literally, yeah. that would be out. So you would have probably, it by the time you watch this back, um, but like, let's talk about how we met. So we, we met at Huckle Tree. So listeners who are returning, who have seen the Gabby episode or Gabriella episode, because I keep calling her Gabby, but she's Gabriella. I love that name. So grounding. <laughs> it's a gorgeous um, I, and it's gorgeous, just beautiful and just so well suited to her. Um, but we met in that space. So you were so what what were you just explain to people what what your role was in relation to all of this that we've kind of you know yeah um so no like um so yeah Gabby she's like co-founder at, at Huckle Tree and they're a co-working company um but like big focus on like the startup kind of ecosystem in in the UK and Europe and I think at the time that you and I met there I was consulting alongside like, well, I guess through BU and building out Black Unicorn. Um, I was consulting as their head of like, I think you're called a VP of people and culture or something, like head, head of people. Um, so doing a lot of work there around hiring as they were growing out, like literally the stuff we just talked about, but advising the co-founders on strategy, being a sort of executive coach to them as well as they kind of manage 
all the pressures they face, like raising investment. What are we doing? How are we growing? All the stuff that they need to like manage as well, as well as their team. Um, and yeah, just kind of like making sure they were set up to have the best culture and sort of grow in the right way. And um, I think, did I have an, the first time I met you, did I have an injury or did we, I can't you remember. Had, no, you had an injury so that you, well, so let me again, just put this into even more context. So I was the in-house physiotherapist for Huckle Tree, And for the life of me, I didn't know what I was. I mean, I knew physiotherapy inside out, but I didn't know anything about that setup. I didn't know anything about co-working spaces. I didn't know anything about like, and I just remember some of our earlier conversations during your physio sessions, because Jason had come in with a groin injury <laughs> <laughs> that's that, that's not that. <laughs> why did you drop it like you made it sound like a euphemism <laughs> no, because <laughs> you whilst playing football <laughs> whilst playing football no. I'm, I'm doing this for you you're like so the boys come in with their groin injury <laughs> so then joy helps them out like you don't want people getting the wrong idea you are a serious professional i am i am, I am. the london physio is a serious company i am the hundreds exactly <laughs> but i was i i was i i mentioned that in in some ways you know to kind of set the scene for how, you know, how much time we spend together, because those injuries take a long time to get better. Like, uh, you know, like there's certain injuries that you can ignore, you know, there's certain injuries that you can just be like, oh, it's all good. I'll just go and see a physio once or twice. No, we spent time together over like a period. And in those physio sessions, and obviously being in that setting with you, I was only there like maybe once a week or whatever, but um, being in that setting with you, I really got to know you. And it was from that, that I honestly, like in, in the initial stages, I used to think, well, is he speaking English? Like, what is VP of people? What, like, what are all these terms? Like, whoa, what is happening? And then, and then I was trying to figure out where am I? Like these people, these people are all self-employed or they don't have work. Like yeah. what is going and on? I, I must have like, for, I must have confused you even more. It's like, so you work for Huckle Tree. So you work for Or do you work for one of the companies who are using the co-working space right. provided by Huckle Tree? Right. So I know you work, but you also work for you. <laughs> exactly. through your company, Black Unicorn, who are members at Huckle right and I'm like okay (laughs) right but this was how exciting it was for me then because I really felt like I was stepping into a new world and you were part of that process for me you know I feel like our our, um, friendship is so grounded that time was so important like the conversations we had made sense the fact that you're Nigerian makes it like (laughs) everything about it and the way that we just kind of really bonded professionally but also like um personally um and grew this friendship like it's and and that period of time for me was so eye opening like understanding that I wasn't just this person just going into a place and making people laugh and getting them better like no this is this is actually I'm an entrepreneur now and there's so many other people like me in this space and you know some of them were startups and your company was still it wasn't I don't even think Black Unicorn was like had did you have a website then where you like out out then sending newsletters and things like uh, that right like, that. <laughs> I, yeah I think we were working out like the website then yeah, we yeah the website. it was it was very early stages and I I felt I felt part of but I also felt like this exciting little kid in a candy store just going, you know, here you come having, you know, done a lot of all these different things. And I'm, I, I just, it was so exciting to learn what these terms were and what you did and like how that fit into places and, and then, and then taking it back to the whole how do you tell your family that this is like, how do you explain, <laughs> <laughs> like, how, yeah. how do you discuss with your Nigerian family that this is what you, like, do you know what I mean? And yep. I was just so <laughs> fascinated by you and by what you did and the fact that you just did it so well and you still do. And to see you, to have seen you like sort of over that period of time and now, you know, becoming black unicorn, it's just so amazing. You know, it's so organic. Like, I just couldn't even imagine you not doing something that didn't involve a community or like culture or, you know, I feel like you're almost like a seed planter, you know, like you're kind of like planting the seeds of diversity, bringing people together, you know, making sure they have the right mindset and culture. You're probably even like a life coach. Who knows? (laughs) (laughs) Low key. Low key. Low key. Like Like a real specific like remit. But yeah, like I, I feel like, 
a lot of people come back to me and they're like, I didn't know I was getting like a therapy right. session today. And it's like, I mean, very, I'm not a licensed therapist. Like I, that is not what I pitch. But yeah, like if, you, if you're, if you work in startups, like it's kind of a love hate relationship. And yeah, like, I think I get that. And kind of hold space for a lot of people where it's like this is great it also that's sucks it. Yay, but it's also great that's it that <laughs> is it you hold space for people that is it really that is what you do yeah I think that's a big part of it it's a big part of it yeah and kind of like the yeah overall yeah because everybody needs it like founders are very lonely they're very single-minded they're under a lot of pressure and they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> they have a great, and, they have a great vision, but have no idea. Like, help! Yeah. Let's get a team to help me get there. So they don't know what they're doing. I can and we're relate. all building stuff, so we don't know what right. we're doing. We're building things without a blueprint, which again right. ties to the: Are you the? Are you the elder sibling? Fine. Mm. Are you from? Are you third culture? Are you like third culture background? Um, did you grow up in like a single parent background, like family, like all these kind of like things that aren't? Not everybody has that experience, but for a lot of people, it's like. It's probably a reason why you thrive in the chaos of working at an early or growth stage consumer startup. Like it's probably a reason why you're able to like build and fix and be a bit of a sort of polymath kind of thing, a bit of a multi-hyphenate. Is that what they call you? And you can do a bit of everything really Every, well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like that why, kind of vibe. Why do you think you thrive in that environment? Probably. I mean, so that helps, right? Probably for a lot of those reasons. Like I can, a lot of those um, characteristics I have um among many others and i think adaptability as, tell me uh that's what we've got so yeah like there's so many components there's so many components right like i think growing up like working class um you know sort of social housing single parent household my dad wasn't around um for as long as i can remember i don't remember my dad being around that's how young i was when he he bounced and um yeah, mum mum's from Nigeria. My dad's from my dad's half Gambian, half Sierra Leonean. Um, but mum's Nigerian. She's her ethnicity is Ibo, Kwale, you know, Ibo, you get mm-hmm. it, you know, Ibo Queen. Always. Let's go. Let's uh, <laughs> go. <laughs> but also like with that, like, you know, it, it kind of without going too long on it, like it trails so far back. Like my mum was a toddler if that when um the nigerian civil war happened in the biafran war and she was on tied on like around on her mum's back with rapper like t- with, t- with you know tied around her and she caught a stray bullet in like her ankle i remember being a child and seeing this like scar on my mum's oh ankle my and be like mum like what's this and she's like oh you know when i was really young there was a civil war back home and um i was on my mum's back while she was trying to flee and i took a bullet caught a stray and you know I remember like crying like who shot my mom and like being like really like Aww. traumatized by it when I was super young and um you know her mom left when she was really young and she's like not the eldest but kind of Isn't the eldest like kind of passed away no like just um it's still a little you know, I feel like I'm opening my mom's in the ash like kind of telling <laughs> her, her story <laughs> to the world um but do you know what I mean like um yeah I think yeah like she kind of left um my mum and her siblings. I don't know the full ins and outs of how and why, to be honest. Um, but that was really traumatizing for mum, like growing up without her mum. And then and, and again, I'm sure there's some things that are relatable, like growing up with a um a stepmom and having half siblings who kind of got 100 percent love of that motherly love, and then you kind of you and your full siblings kind of get a different experience. So I think even that, like, t- sort of, and then moving, her moving to the UK, not knowing anybody, very kind of isolated family, very fragmented family, even, you know, back home and with her, like, sisters and brothers and so on, and her having to figure so much out, and then having me and my siblings in that situation. Mm. And yeah, like, you know, um, my my I, my brother and sister, I have a brother and sister, they have a different dad to me. Um, he was quite violent um and was an alcoholic so from a young age kind of seeing that and having to be first responder to that and you know call the ambulance call the police or as I was getting older like try and keep my brother and sister out of the situation or intervene and that went on for like into my teenage years and um yeah like things like that I was um sexually abused when I was relatively young by like a neighbor that was left who I was left with um like overnight and so a lot of things you have to figure out on your own. I was the elder sibling, so you have to like, you don't have that sense of protection and advice and an older cousin or older 
sibling kind of looking out for you. So you're learning everything on the go, no blueprint. Um, and yeah, like other things as well, like, you know, just growing up in London in the sort of noughties and, you know, seeing violence, you know, people get stabbed and killed outside your house. Like there was a situation I was like the first responder to that type of scenario, like a neighbor, a friend of a neighbor who I also knew um, was stabbed by two people I knew, two people who went to the same school as me at the time. And um, yeah, like you hear all the kerfuffle, you come out, you respond, you know, sort of doing primary first aid, like putting pressure on the wound and so on. And like sort of talking the person through it, like trying to stave off like trauma, you know, them going into shock, um, screaming to your mum, like you have to call the ambulance, you have to call police, et cetera. Um, And yeah, like just things like, you know, you have to learn that adaptability and kind of create your own sense of safety, which is probably where that big main character energy comes from, right? Like the world hasn't kept you safe in a way that a lot of people are told that they, you know, you're, you're a child, you're protected in this world. It's like, well, <laughs> that ship has sailed. And if anything, I feel like the protector. So it's all that parentified child stuff and things like that, like all those components, I think really kind of shape your sense of like adaptability yeah. and empathy and absolute, you know, in not, you know, this in, you know, in terms of injustice and inequity, like you're very sensitive to it. it was always someone who's very protective of like my friends at school who would get bullied and things like that. I had one or two protectors when I was younger and a little bit more docile um, that kind of helps me. So I sort of value in that. So I think those things without like, I know we'll probably get into it in more detail potentially, but but like those things kind of add to that sense of you got to build what you didn't have. And also like your outlook is just, I don't know, kind of split people into muggles and, and wizards. <laughs> like you don't get to be a muggle anymore. It's like, all right, <laughs> like I've just got to like figure it out. And you kind of have a, a, how would I describe it? You're quite agile when it comes to understanding and learning and being curious about a lot of different things things become a lot less binary comes a lot less it's right or it's wrong or it's black or white it's like yo you have these kind of experiences i have not had the worst experiences in the world at all or anything like that but anything and you can have less bad experiences and still they matter and these things um can shape your view but i think you get very comfortable in the gray and you get very comfortable in the complexity of things and where other people are like well i think this is one way or the other and you're kind of like no like I it's complicated I can kind of sit with all of that because that's the only way you can kind of make sense of your experiences and what's happened to you and the world you want to shape and the life you want to shape going forward so I think things like that really shape like outlook adaptability and just a sense of like you didn't overcome or endure the things you did to be ordinary or Mm. mediocre I love like, that. You didn't yeah. come this far to come this far. Yeah, let's go. Like, this was all for a reason. So let's do this. Um, you know? I, also I love, remembering I also, to take time, you know. Yeah, yeah. Don't be too, you know, it's, I've also learned the balance between four main character energy and like, through force of will, I can do anything. Mm. But also, have like enjoy this life, chop this life from a, be gentle, chill, yeah. read. Play a video game, listen to music, <laughs> travel, <laughs> drive a car, feel the wind yeah. in your hair, like, enjoy like you know I'm, yeah. I'm i think it's important to keep the balance between yeah like doing what you need to 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 win and to within reason yeah. um and realize yeah. the world you want to you want to you want to be in but also not to hustle porn or sort of positivity porn your way fully like you can, there's still balance like sometimes you need to be the big main character sometimes mm-hmm. you need to be sasha mm-hmm. fierce mm-hmm. i'm sure beyonce at home so every now and again it's just like eating popcorn and chilling out like and that's okay as well because then you have energy to come and do tour all over the world and, yeah. and entertain everybody and be that incredible performer you know yeah absolutely you know what i mean i've obviously we've had a chat about this but just hearing it again and hearing you say some of those things. And, you know, it's really a tip of the iceberg. The reality is always that there is so much more underneath. Sometimes our brains even compartmentalize these experiences and forget some of them, you know, so that we can thrive, so that we can just be like, okay, we're good. We just need to keep going forward. There's a reason for this. And I, I mean, I love that you have in some ways repurposed it. You know, you've kind of repurposed your story so that you can now 
be what you never had, you know, to people. You're almost sort of creating a world professionally and personally, because you are the same Jay I would see in Huckle Tree, like being professional at work, like you are that person when we're just hanging out at Soho Farmhouse. Like you, you've kind of created um, a world where other people can thrive, you know, around you. Is, is that tiring? Is that exhausting uh yeah <laughs> yeah um it is but i think you get you know i've done like you know in the last five or so years like i'm um, completed therapy i i finished my my um journey with my uh therapist uh last summer it's about been just over a year now and um yeah I think that's helped a lot with just like understanding yourself and working through so much like trauma and identity stuff and all kinds of all kinds of stuff but also um accepting that like I say with that big main character energy like I am who I am and to do what I want to do and achieve the things I want to achieve like that's not really going anywhere so you could make the argument like all right just you know you don't need to be this engaged with and responsive to everything and what other people need and kind of be minded in that way all of the time or you don't need to be that like you're good but it's also like but I do need to be that a lot of the time but I also need to pick and choose when it's big main character energy and when it's like yeah I'm in introverted gentle babe mode like I just need to like do me or hug up on my on my partner or play some video games or go for a walk or go for a drive or something go travel whatever these things are and yeah, it, it's tiring, I think. But there's also the other side of things is like how many people almost don't know, like kind of don't know how to rest anyway. <laughs> so like, <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like you thrive in the chaos, you thrive yeah. in. And that's, again, part of it. I think those components I described, like, you know, um, single parent background and third culture and things like that. It's, you don't have to have those um, com- components in your experience in in life to have those characteristics but they're pro- if you have had those experiences i think they are heavy index they index heavily towards you are going to have that those kinds of um characteristics and sort of in your personality and yeah like some of us just don't know how to rest anyway so i don't even know what i'd do if i wasn't like as, as exhausting as it can be like i don't know if i know how to be something different most of the time anyway so it's like well embrace it and just know when you just have the ability to like chop and change like knowing you need to rest knowing you need to take a break honor that whether it's day by day if you're feeling really like low or low mood or whatever it is like honor that that's okay you are a human being like it's fine you're just feeling the feelings but also like when you're ready to go again this is who you are like don't deny don't deny yeah I like, love who that you are, your identity yeah I actually love that I think in the um in the world that we we have now where you know healing is such a big thing like kind of having therapy and stuff because you know I'm also going through a healing phase as you know um it's very easy for us to be like oh this is all as a result of trauma like the the personality that I have now this big energy, big character energy, blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, it's as a result of trauma. So let me do the opposite because, you know, I'm healing and I know that I'm just trying to be what I didn't have to everybody around me. But you know what? No. Um, and I think what you've said is really important. It's it's kind of acknowledging that, yeah, that's where that comes from. But that is also me. You know, that is also who I am. And, and some people could argue that you're only who you are because of the you know, we could go, which, what's the chicken or the egg? (laughs) But I love what you're saying about finding the balance, knowing when to, to just say, I need a hug, you know, from my partner or knowing when to go away. I mean, you're away all the time anyway. (laughs) I can't imagine that you're not having some form of rest when you're traveling, you know, which is nice. And I just, I love that you've been able to have therapy for one, because a lot of men in our culture and just people generally just our cultures, different African cultures, like therapy is just not a thing. Like we just don't do it. Our parents don't even want to have conversations, let alone actual therapy. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh-huh. <Yep. laughs> like you can't even ask them questions. You know, you can't ask them questions about why did this happen when it happened. And speaking of that, like, have you been able to have some conversations with 
mom because clearly she's obviously she she's come through her own um a lot of wounds physical and otherwise um and and maybe she hasn't gotten a chance to speak to her mom because we don't do that <laughs> they just be like who are you to ask that sort of rubbish question uh, are, we, are we edge mates <laughs> yeah exactly mates? i'm your mother <laughs> my dad my dad used to as close as we were he used to tell me eh it's between me and your mom what what cons-? i was like it's my whole childhood what it's do you my mean whole it's life. My whole- <laughs> he's like eh it's- i married your mother it's not it's not anything to do with you and i'm like are you seeing this yeah, <laughs> yeah like- it's, the, it's the badge i call it the, the sheriff the sheriff the sheriff's badge of I mean, parents do this, right? Like, moms are. I'm your mum. You, yeah. you can't talk to me like that. It's like, literally, no, you're my mum, and you're you're <laughs> mad, and what you're saying is wild. And like, <laughs> there are loads of mums in the history of like the world, and like, you can't just flash a badge of like, nope, you can't say anything. I'm the sheriff in town. Like, yeah, you're my mum. I love you, but also you're moving mad. <laughs> like, yeah, what you're saying makes no sense, and I'm gonna right. call you out about it. And like, even for mean? us, like, we need closure. We need we need to understand because. Also, what I'm realizing is that a lot of these memories we have, a lot of these feelings we have, a lot of these, and especially if things like, you know, sexual abuse has happened in the past or just abandonment, you know, a lot of the things you said, Jay, you know, I can relate to a lot of all of that, you know, and I've shared some of that on the podcast too. Like I'm quite open on the podcast and, but I haven't really gone into that level of detail. There were things that you and I talked about that nobody knows, like literally not even my friends, not even, even me. I think at that point I was just like, oh, yeah, I guess I'm admitting to this now. So I don't even know if it's, you know, but then I'm just, I, I honestly just feel like with our parents, um, we, they were adults at that time when we were children. So a lot of the memories that have come with us have come from our childhood, have come from the eyes of a kid. Um, and also just the woundedness of that same kid, like, a child seeing something and being expected to remember it 20 years from now is one thing, but a child being wounded by that thing and then having to continue to deal with it in their adulthood and sometimes not even knowing that it is linked. I I feel like this is where the conversation with our parents come to play because they have they had the perspective of an adult at that time, but also they were the fucking causes of it. Like the, <laughs> the, yeah. the one, do you know what I mean? So I'm like, 100. even just being able to sit and talk to them would just, I'm not saying you should say sorry, because we know you're not going to say sorry. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, we know you're not going to apologize. I'm, I'm sorry that you're upset. <laughs> yeah. like <laughs> You're sorry for what you did. Yeah. That I can have catharsis. <laughs> I'm sorry what? that you feel that way and that you're too much of a coward right. to figure out your feelings. No, no, just say I'm sorry yeah. for my feelings. <laughs> One time, this 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 was like the level of apology I got. It was like, do you know what I've done to other people? Yours was not in. I was like, wow. So you're a demon. I was <laughs> like, says you're a demon. Wow. Okay. So, so I and I'm lucky that I've not. Yeah, I'm lucky yeah. that I've not experienced your full right. demon wrath. Right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> lucky me. Because what? for me, that was that, and that thing that we were talking about was the yeah. it. It was the it was yeah. the not even the straw that broke the camel. It was the freaking whole camel under the rock. Like literally, yeah. I was, and and I was like. Not that I'm expecting you to say sorry, but, you know, are we going to pretend like it didn't happen or, yes. and I yes. literally just got, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what we're going to do. With literally it was like, nothing happened. Our lives. Yeah. I literally <laughs> got nothing happened. What happened? And I was like, damn. So anyway, my question to you is, have you had moments with adults around, you know, mom, um, or just anyone from back in that, have you had that, uh, time to, to sort of, or space even to kind of reason it outside of yourself, some of the experiences that you had? Yeah, a few, a few times. Um, I'd say like, especially with my mom. Yeah. There've been a lot of like come to Jesus moments where we've kind of like had it out and I've tried to yeah like hold space and make clear like what my experience is and how yeah how things have made me feel and how they've influenced me um and you always get you always meet that resistance right you always meet that kind of again <laughs> like my mom's great i love my mom but like muggles muggles don't want to grow Mugg- again binary it's like by my mother i raised you it was hard for me as well i experienced things i suffered and i raised you and you turned out well so what are you doing here like so that's it you're like Okay, cool. But like all of these component pieces of like 
absolute failings. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, again, not to blame, but let's be like, let's let's call a spade a spade. Yeah, like, if your child is honest. sexually abused on your watch, like, right, that is a failing. And I, right. but I also get that, like, it's not that you're to blame. Of course, I'm not like blaming folks other than the person who did that and whatever, but you left your child in the care of somebody who could do that to your child. Like that is a failing. If I have children one day and that happens, I am minded in a way that that was something I have to learn to live with um, and forgive myself for. But like, it is that these are failings in your role as a parent. And, and, and the other side is that you can often like turn out the way you do in spite of, it's like, but I miss you so well. You're like, I, survived like, like I, su- yeah. I, su- I survived like I'm not like right. normal kids like I yeah. don't know if you just teach some of the things that I've like that's responding in a way to like think you know trauma and, and craziness partly um yeah it's again if you're quite binary in your outlook and it's like I'm a good mother like I raised my child and like they survived and they thrived and if anything bad things happened to me and in spite of that it's, and it's like that's tr- also true Mm. It's not anywhere in the gray of what I just described. It's not in any of the 50 shades of gray in between, but it's like, <laughs> I am the, a good mother. Even though these things happened to me, your father wasn't there. Your father was a problem. He left and I still did this. And that's my story. And it's like, that is a true story. But if we made it like a Game of Thrones rather than maybe a two hour movie, I feel as though there'd be a little bit more complexity that actually <laughs> still reflects favorably on you. That's the weirdest right. thing. It's like, I actually, it's kind of a, in actually, like, you know, to answer your question, like you have these conversations and I've come at it more recently from a, I'd rather get busy being permanently frustrated by by mum and her like inability to like see like see me in the way that I need to be seen. Like she just can't do it. And it's like structural reasons, right? Like I'm the parentified child, I'm the one who doesn't need anything, I'm the super independent one, I'm the provider one. So like I don't get so you don't get nurtured, right? It's like ah Jason will be fine. And also like it's a it's codependency because I would never ask for help or show vulnerability. <laughs> so it's also a component in like, oh you didn't show me that you needed anything. You told me you were Superman. So go save everyone Superman. That's right. You're invulnerable. Go do the thing you need to do. So it's part of that as well. It is um, oh I thought oh my goodness. Sorry. This is, I feel like this is where, like when we first met, you know, I feel like these were the conversations and although we may not have had them in a lot of depth then, or like, I feel like we've had them in different, like different facets. Like, do you know what I mean? We've had like deep conversations then and deep conversations now where we're like bringing everything together. But you in your family is me and my family, you know? the the one who is not allowed to to break down you know one the one who is like yeah but you're fine what what's, what could what could possibly be wrong with you i was literally at the point where i was like at one point i was suicidal like and literally i was getting eh, what could be wrong with you you're so ungrateful like you know like the rest of the rest of your siblings they don't have this they don't have and it's like we all actually do have the same opportunity just because I took it upon myself and as part of my trauma, you know, to, to, to be the one to create the space where everyone has everything and blah, 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 you know, much to my own detriment, unbeknownst to me. Um, and, but, but then it's also like, but they didn't stop you either. So mm-hmm. you know how the kind of like, well, you're the strong one. You're the one who wants to go off to London and do this. And you're the one. And it's like, um, when I was providing, you didn't say, no, keep that for a rainy day. When I was, you know, where literally it's like, you've done it. We've done it ourselves and that's our trauma. And it's our, we took that upon ourselves, but we were also facilitated into that role because you have to remember that role doesn't exist without people to provide for. You can't be strong if there weren't people around you that weren't as strong. Like you just can't, and, and then when you do those deeds, you get praised for it too. It's like, oh, oh my goodness, my child, oh my daughter, she's just, do you know what I mean? And it's just like all of those things facilitate you into that role that you're playing. But because we've accepted that and put ourselves in big boxes, we've in some ways uh, dehumanized ourselves to the point where when we're breaking down, it's not even recognized. It's not even it's not even acknowledged like, oh, this could be a possibility. And it's it's a genuine belief that you are not you can't break down. You cannot have any issues. You can't just because it's like, I don't know if it's because they don't know how to support you, but they, they know how to support each other. But I'm just like, it's so confusing. Like, how have you made sense of all of it? Like, how have yeah. you, 
How have you, how do you reason it today? Well, you're right. It's because it is mutually beneficial. And again, the starting point, you you were born, you know, you didn't ask to be born. So, you know, like you're not the starting point, but at the same time, yeah, I've held that position so many times where it's beneficial to, it is to my identity, to my sense of self. I'm that guy. I'm the guy like, you need money, I've got you. You need somewhere to stay, I've got you. Like you need school fees, I've got you. You need help with your house deposit, I've got you. Like you've got a debt issue, I've got that. Like there's something to that. Like to say that that doesn't, yeah, it's a circle jerk. It's 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 a it's codependent. It's like I I am we are we are handshaking. We're like I am I am validated by the fact that I am him. I am her. I'm that. I am them. I'm that person. Like cool, but like the other side is they. You know, you are this source of value for for everybody else, and the you know part a part of it is like people just can't hold again it's that binary thinking like people can't hold the complexity of the the truth like i especially through therapy was helped towards being helped towards understanding like oh your mom knows she failed you in like some really key ways she's a person like she knows she knows like uh oh like you grew up in a house with a violent alcoholic for your formative years that's not good like uh oh like you know you've had to like see and be you know all these things are terrible all these things you've already mentioned right but like she can't hold it because if i if whenever i've had like blazing arguments with my mom about these kind of things when it's got to that kind of like breaking point where we're both like animated and we're you know now we're just saying what we're saying after after um you know uh brushing everything under the carpet for however long since the last argument like if, if I really went to town just freely, it's like, you can't hold, you can't hold, it would break you to hold this. But like if I, if I forced you to hold this and you did something to yourself or like, I, I, like in a weird way, I'd almost feel responsible. It's kind of a, I, I can only ask you to hold the truth that you can hold. Are you somebody who enjoys looking after your body? If you didn't already know, through the London Physio, my very own brand, I have now released some fitness products that are practical. If you're somebody that travels and someone who loves working out at the gym or you love working out at home and you love using your own products, then these will definitely be for you. We have all sorts from double-sided gym mats to foam rollers, to massage balls, to resistance bands, the long ones, the short ones, the looped ones, the glutes bands, weighted skipping ropes, we have them all. So if you are someone who really enjoys looking after your body and you enjoy having lightweight products that you can take with you wherever you are, then these will definitely be for you. So if you want to get your hands on any of our products, my Linktree link is linktr.ee forward slash joy agude that's j-o-y october golf umbrella delta echo where you'll find all the links to each and every product i hope you enjoy using them and if you do don't forget to leave us a review back to the episode do you feel like it might it might be too much for them so because again are, are we filling that role are we filling that role that we're trying not to fill which is if I really bring this to the surface and I, if I really challenge this, then it might get too much for you. So I don't want it to be too much for you. And it's like, but are we doing, uh, here we are again, asking for love and support to be seen, but then actually we're going, but only see me as much as you you can manage. Like, do you know what I mean? So I, I will carry the rest. If, if you just carry 12%, which is where we just function without arguing and we just know that you know and I know, but we're not really talking about it. I will just carry the remainder, you know, 70 Kind of. Yeah, because we we, it kind of, because we are shifting the, like, as much as there's righteousness, like there are just things that are just right or wrong. There are, but there's also like the, the journey matters. So like it is right to expect to be seen and to be heard and for people to accept, like objectively, these are like failings of mine. They don't mean they don't make me a failure, but they are, you know, itemized. Each of these are failings because I'm a human and I failed. Okay. You won't die. It's okay. Right. You, you made mistakes. You failed. You didn't do everything right. That's every human that ever lived ever, right. but you are shifting the goalposts from I probably growing up, there was an element of smalling yourself as well. There's probably an element, again, if these characteristics are common for anyone listening or for you and I, there's probably an element of if I just tidy everything up, 
Mm -hmm. If I just stay small and quiet, if I just make sure I'm not the reason for any (laughs) angst or dis, you know, anger or any kind of like issues of that kind, then everything will be okay. Because your child, you internalize that the reason things aren't working is because of you. So you have to adapt to survive. Mm -hmm. So you've probably had, I have quietly got on with it. I fix everything. I stay out of the way. I now help everybody. And now you want to be seen? Mm. Like, but that's not the agreement we silently came to is that you've got it together. Oh my goodness. (laughs) And we can depend on you. And that's what we're doing. And now, and you shift. And worse, the worst thing about that is now you're shifting the goalposts at a later time. Yeah. For them, it's like, I guess what I was going to, the point I was making about truth, there's righteousness. Is it right or is it wrong? But it's also like something that happens when you shake people's sense of reality. Mm-hmm. And it's not because the way you're shaking their sense of reality is untrue. It's just mm-hmm. because it is very unsettling and triggering for your sense of reality to be shaken. Mm. That's why certain people vote for Trump or vote conservative, despite right. the psychotic guys running the conservatives or whatever it is, right? It's like, mm-hmm. but this country has told me that based on the color of my skin, based on what's in the front of my pants, based on my class, based on how much mm. money I make, whatever it is, I am more deserving of things here right. than others. Right. When anything happens to shake that, yeah. which is the world and increasingly you know, a late stage capitalist nightmare that we're all like, oh, what do we do? Is AI <laughs> taking our jobs? Oh no, the planet's burning, like just crisis all the time. Like, yeah, that's going to shake your sense of reality. And right. it's like, no, but we are the kings and we deserve everything. And right. by being here and being English or British or American or whatever, whatever version of that makes you most entitled. Mm. Once Ooh. that reality is shaken, Jay. you can't handle and you glitch out. It's literally like glitching out. Jay. And that's what's happening. You're just shaking their reality. It's like, I am a good parent. I did everything right. I made no mistakes. And what you're saying is, I've been the lightning rod for the family and your sense of like equilibrium. And now I'm asking for more. I'm I'm relinquishing my role in this moment, in this argument, I'm relinquishing my role as lightning rod. I'm not here to just be the load bearer for like the lightning striking the family so no one else has to deal with it. I, I need to be seen. I have needs. Everything that happens to me is not okay. You were complicit in a lot of these things happening. You've never looked at me now and said, I'm sorry, I didn't do it all right. That's all I need. It's very simple. Though. Just, I'm so sorry, I didn't do it all right. It's okay, you're a human. You want to go for a beer? It's very simple. Like the, 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 the route to healing is actually quite simple. It's actually you, simple. It's not hard, but they can't Ooh. do it. So it's like that sense of shaking someone's reality. It's not because what you're saying is untrue. It's because they cannot hold it and everything is geared towards, they've just got very comfortable in one setting mm. and they can't humble themselves. They can't hold it in their minds. I'm sure there are other things where they hold the complexity of it, but this, they can't do it. So you just have to make a decision. So like, ah, if I, I have to love you, at the distance that works for both of us. But me, I, I have to have self-respect. So there's right. a level at which I can dip in and call you every month and send you the occasional text message. You send me your WhatsApp, auntie WhatsApp messages. Oh, well done. It's Monday. Have a great Monday. And you forward it to all your <laughs> all the other aunties. So like, Thanks. The Lord is blessing us today. Yeah, Jay, you're like, okay. Jay, you know? Jay, every single word that's coming out of your mouth, like I'm just like... I feel, first of all, this feels like therapy. Like it feels like, it feels like the kind of therapy where it's like, you know how like I've never been to an AA meeting, but it's the sort of therapy where everyone in the room freaking gets it. Not even gets it because you're explaining it right. No, you are speaking my story word for word. And then on top of that, the way that you're able to take yourself out of it, because it is also your experience, right? It's not like you studied this at university and now you're like, oh, I know I can give a good speech about it. No, it is your true experience. So the way that you're able to then take yourself out of it, out of that pain, out of that truth almost, you know, that, that existence that, that is, that is us, the foundation that we're standing on today, you're able to take yourself, step sideways a little bit and say, but this is why, you know, you're not saying it is right that they're not able to hold space or whatever, but you're able to be like, but this is why, because when you bring it to the surface, us as you and I, the providers, the the cash cows, the ones who would step up and like, you're talking about paying school fees. No, like I would literally, I mean, I did a lot of that. And, and for, you know, members of my family that I really shouldn't have done that. And I did it out of the goodness of my heart and because I wanted to, and because I was the one who was like, oh, I'll do it, you know? But then when you really think about those conversations and, and how they might've started, it might've started with, oh, my back is aching tonight. 
They know how to get you to say certain things like, oh, if only I could just work extra out. I'll be like, oh no, I'll do it. Right. So, but, but then in, in this scenario, we are explaining why space can't be held for us because we have traditionally taken on those roles, but now it's kind of like, if we ever bring it to the surface to say, can we talk about this to parents or to siblings or to family members? It's like, yeah, we can, but we're not going to, because if I agree that this is what's been happening, then I'm also agreeing that my reality has been X or like I've played a role in that, or I, I haven't been, a, do you know what I mean? And it's yeah, just it's like, like whew, everything it's like, goes, yeah. is just making sense. It's that like, cause what you're asking is for them to grow at a time where they're not comfortable or able yeah. to do that. Yeah. Like you're saying grow and adapt your outlook and your response, your sense of responsibility, which number one, like it's just off, off the cuff. Like, any, like, have you tried to convince anybody of any accepted reality that they shouldn't hold? Like whether it be mm. misogyny, whether it be misogynoir, whether it be, you know, racism whether it be whatever it is like you can't just intellectually go yeah don't be racist anymore oh, okay like that's not a thing like that's that's, that's a journey and all the rest yes. of it and yeah you're right and by changing the terms of the agreement the silent agreement you made when you were like five <laughs> or whenever well, like before, by now changing the terms even came to the world mm, yeah well you could yeah and like it's you become scapegoated that's the other side like it's that turn on you where it's like hold on you're not just, you're making me, you're make, you're turning the spotlight on me. You're making me realize I have to do some growing. Like, mm. and that's when the light turns on you and it's that scapegoat thing. I always describe it like, is it like the movie Inception when you're in someone's dreams and then like all their projections in their dream or look at you when they realize you shouldn't be here. You should, <laughs> yeah. Why are you in my dream? And it will start yeah. like bumping into you and being angry <laughs> with you. And it's like, yeah, that's what's going to start happening. Like all the mistakes you made, you're going to have to hold them. Like, yeah even if you've already held them, like it's going to turn on you where you become the scapegoat. Like you've got to pick your role. Are you the savior of the family or are you the scapegoat? Uh, right. There's no, yeah. There's no room in the middle, I'm afraid. The, the black For most sheep. people. And I, yeah, yeah. And I, I want to talk about the whole black sheep, black unicorn thing. But before we get off this, because this in itself is a whole, it's juicy, like not, not juicy because it's interesting to talk about. It's our realities. And for so many people, you know, for so many people. Um, and interestingly, you know, when I was, when I had, did the episode of Gabriella, it's like mm. similarities were just, I was like, damn, like, you know, it was just one of those, like, you always think, oh, this thing only happens in African families or like, it's only happening to me. You know, sometimes we look at our friends and we think, oh, it's only happening to me. And it's like, mm -hmm, babe, it's happening to all of us in different ways. Let's talk about this covenant of the, so like, have you heard the term, um, Oh, blood blood is thicker than water uh the full saying have you heard it i have but i can't remember it's another one of those sayings that like yeah we only know half of it and it sort of misleads you it's but yeah actually i'm sure you've got it opposite it's complete it's a complete opposite let me try and remember it blood is thicker than water so the blood of the covenant mm -hmm. is thicker than the water of the womb um which really means obviously that the friendships you make or the people you choose it always it, that, that, that bond is stronger and more meaningful than the family you were born into. But that's not even the question I want to ask. The question is, what is this covenant we have with our families? And like, and I know this is a very deep spiritual question and I, I don't even know the answer to this, like, but, but I know that there's something, I know that there's something for two reasons. So I know that I, f I have this really strong feeling that I chose my family before I came here. I, I looked at the world and I was like, yep, them. <laughs> I was like, all, all that trauma, yep, them. <laughs> I'm a go, I'm a go. That's where I want to go. I know that. I don't know that the, the, I don't know what it means really for me, but I know that I chose them for a reason. And I know that I chose to take up this role that I take for a reason before I came. So that's one. And then two, I feel like, on the um on the physical side of things before I was born there was a role already carved out for me right when I look at my dad's generation my dad was it he was the provider the cash cow the one that literally the entire village would come my dad would have meetings in the house from village people would have traveled like days to come and sit with him and ask about you know their children having money to go to school my dad sponsored people families and this guy 
a bit like us today. He didn't have a full time job. Like he was, he was a hustler. He was a consultant. He didn't work for anyone. He had business partners abroad, but he was working until the day he freaking died. None of these people look back and went, it's our turn to look after you. You know, when I even think about how my father passed away, oh, Oh my God, we're not going there. But literally, um, nobody was willing to even put money down. Like a lot of people would think about families now as like, oh, we live in a house. My father built houses to house, like in our actual house, we had like one whole house, like a four bedroom house for my mother and, and her kids, a four bedroom house for my stepmom and her kids. We had a three bedroom apartment at the back of the same house for my mom's, my dad's sister and mm-hmm. their like cousins or whatever. I don't even know how they're related. Then a, another <laughs> three bedroom yeah. house at the bottom for my dad's sister and her children. These kids then went on to have kids because they were like 15, 16 years older than us fuck knows. They're all very old. Um, and they all went on to have children. And my dad sponsored his sisters, their children, his brothers, their children, all of their then children. And I'm like, this man died working like a fucking cash cow. And at no point did anyone even think when he was in hospital, he's tried for us. Mm, Let's put, it's no. our time. And so I realized that even during the the short period that he was sick and even leading up to that, it was my responsibility. If I didn't put any money down, he ain't going down. And my dad lost his life for that little thing. For literally, and, and, and so I know that even physically, like aside from the spiritual world and who may have chose what before you came, in your family, there is a covenant that you've signed. There's some invisible agreement that you're like, it's me or nobody else. I'm the provider. I'm the one that doesn't get to have, get to cry. I'm the one that you literally sign that role. Like when you think about that, I I don't know what a contract, what would you call it? How does that, like, how do you, I don't even know what I'm trying to ask, but what, what's your opinion on that? Like, because I feel like it exists. We just don't know that it does. I'm not like strong on any of these things, but I'm very curious and um, maybe not convinced, but like I feel a lot of these like concepts, like I feel as though there's something circular, there's something kind of like you return or come to this realm and you sort of like, before you're born, like your spirit or whatever it is, like selects like where you're supposed to be. Because I do think like, I, like I, I really resonate with what you're saying. Like I think that's some, one of those things that like, and it could be, that makes you feel good. I don't know why I'm in terms of that makes you feel good, or I genuinely literally believe it. Like somewhere in the middle, it's like, it's one of those concepts that I really, that resonate where it's like, that makes sense. Like, cause also what well, that feels true to me, it feels true if nothing else, because you, you're bearing it, mm. you're bearing it. And it's not, and it's not to say that you can't bear it, that, that changes anything. Like, so it's hard. Mm. Like, it's not like you failed if you, you know, don't just de- go and bear it. Like, if, if if you if things go a different way, but like, yeah, I do think it's tough. It's not fair. It's all these things. But like, you you are you are you are able, and you are who you are because of it. Like, you wouldn't be your outlook wouldn't be what it is. Your life wouldn't be what it is. And and not to give it like trauma porn is like you know kind of oh all these terrible things happened to you and that's how you became the queen and you would never have been able to become the queen unless these terrible things happened like on one hand you know there is a lot of truth in that you know pressure creates diamonds blah 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 but at the same time it sucks (laughs) like you shouldn't have to these terrible things shouldn't before you like it's a true statement that these things lead you to being able to do certain things you know you learn how to do that but it's also not something to just aggrandize as like oh why are you complaining like look you're where you are because of these things that happen to you and therefore it's good it's like no it's also those are bad things that happen like yeah yeah <laughs> like I, like there's kind of you know both things are true um more well, you know in both both things are true and yeah like it may change like where i've got to with my mom specifically and i always get there with my mom because she's my mom right like my dad's popped in my dad's popped in and out of my life and bounced or we've come apart in some way you know two or three times in my life I think when I was seven or eight years old um and then when I was a teenager and then when I was in my mid-20s and there's always some sort of like 
separation very soon into like re-establishing something. Um, so it's like a serial abandonment, which is um fun. And um, you know, and it's like other family members, sort of like not blood related, but sort of like our cousins, our uncle, you know, our uncles, our aunties who similarly have like been in and out of our life in phases as well and have been key components some of them to like my upbringing but like also kind of you know abandoned us at like the worst times of like my stepfather being in the house and you know the alcoholism and the violence violence and things like that a time where you could really use that additional support as like a growing adolescent I could do with like someone to talk to and people to talk to and escape and things like that it just wasn't we were just kind of locked in um, because we didn't have that support network and so there's a lot there where I think I I say that to make the point that with my mum, I was like, I'll always find a way for us to find a way back together or find a way forward in a way that I won't with others, not in a bad mind way or anything like that. Just like, yeah, it's, it's mum. Like it's just not, it's, you know, there's always, it's okay if we don't talk for a while, if we're not in the best of times or whatever, but like I will always, the door is always open to us figuring it out. And the phase that I'm in at the moment with mum is I'd rather get busy enduring some of her more frustrating traits um, and hold her to account than, yeah, like, and it could change, like, than like just not have any sense of like intimacy or real meaningful relationship with her right now. And I felt extremely the other way previously I felt like nah I'm just you know I can't miss that right now and maybe it'll change again and that's also okay things expand and grow and peaks and troughs that's fine but yeah I'm kind of in a I've said my piece I forgive you I forgive myself and this is the distance and I'm going to keep educating you within reason on like what I need I'm gonna keep reminding you I should remind her that when she does something wild I'm just like don't do that or don't say that or that hurts. Like I feel hurts when you do that. Like that's the impact. Don't ever do that again. And like, she won't do it. And then maybe she will eventually. And then I'll have to remind her again. Like, what did we say? Don't do that. <laughs> Fuck shit. Like, I don't like that. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> so um, yeah, I, there's something there, but it's also okay to have that boundary and have that kind of, my advice to everybody is it's an evolving thing, but like love, the people that you didn't choose at the distance from which you can still love yourself. Mm. That's it. Can we just let that like, you know, can we, can we let that sit? (laughs) Um, I love, I love your stance. I mean, my next question was really, are you angry about the situation? But I feel like you've answered that, you know, you've forgiven, not just them, but you've also forgiven the version of you of, of you that you were in those situations, because quite frankly, nobody can do anything to you that you don't allow for them to to do. That is such a powerful thing to know, but also such a difficult thing to know, to almost feel like, because like you, I feel like I've forgiven. I'm not angry. I'm not upset. I see the role that I played actively um, in, in all of it really. And I'm now at a point again, similar to you where I can love you from afar. I don't need to hate you or anything, but I'm setting those clear boundaries. Let's talk a bit about boundaries then, because funny enough, that was actually the, um, you know, the voice note I sent you before this. Cause I was like, Oh, this is what we're going to talk about. I'm like, we haven't even talked about it once. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, need, we need this for that. We need this for that. It's us. Just, but let's talk about how do you, and, and I actually want to use this as an opportunity to bring together what you do uh, for work, but also uh, with all of the sort of personal experiences that, you know, you've shared today. Thank you so much for being so open about it. Um the idea of boundaries, it's something that I can imagine that as a VP of people, that's something that you have to maybe encourage people to create in workspaces when it comes to cultures, you know, because healthy boundaries need to be set by the people that expect you to, um, you know, work for them. So, I mean, in this situation, clear contracts are signed, right? When you go and get a job or you like match someone to a job, it's like, this is your role. You're signing a contract if you break this, but in relationships, in families, in within friends, like we don't sign those contracts. So can we sort of bring it together all as one and talk about setting healthy boundaries, how important that 
could be when it comes to relationships with people, especially where where it's not so black and white, like in a job role. Um, in a family, for example, it's not that black or white as we've, you know, realized. Yeah. Um, so how do we how do we even start the conversation of boundaries? And then how do we then begin begin to sort of healthily implement them without isolating ourselves and being all holy holier than thou like I'm the victim I'm gonna fuck off and you guys can do your thing like you know because we need these people in our lives too so how do we how do we start that conversation how do we start setting those boundaries and putting them in place Mm, yeah I there are a couple of things that come to mind I wanted to say even on the last point that we just rounded out in terms of like forgiving yourself and so on and I, I will jump to this as well what we've just got to on boundaries but like part of that forgiving yourself I think is also admitting your faults right like which you've probably been like overly sort of scapegoated for like things you've committed like minor infractions and they've been made out to be atrocities meanwhile like actual atrocities have been inflicted upon you and it's like oh that doesn't matter we're not talking about that so there's also that sense of shame that can become a thing where like the if enough people tell you that you're wrong or you're bad for like the misdemeanors that you've committed or the mistakes that you've made, that it's easy to internalize, well, also I'm bad. And that is almost equal to these things that I have issues with you about parents or whatever it might be. And it's also like forgiving yourself for that. Like, firstly, you are who you are because of the experiences you had. And especially if you get out of like a really difficult upbringing and so on, atrocity free, like you haven't killed anybody, you haven't done like I didn't. I, I didn't kill anyone. Who, like nice. literally, like <laughs> you, you didn't. You didn't go and sell. Like, even if you did sell drugs, whatever it is, but like you weren't stealing money for your mom's purse to go and do like all that kind of stuff. Right. Like you know, it's forgive yourself. Like, and that's a journey and a very difficult thing. But it's that shame component which would which can silence you and can leave you kind of like less able to stand in your truth because you feel like unsettled and triggered by like these things that get thrown at you by people who are scapegoating you collectively often, which can literally convince you into believing, well, those are, th- those are true and I am bad and I am the problem really. And it's like, ah, forgive yourself for, so you made mistakes when you were 19, please, it's okay. Right. Don't worry. I don't let them, <laughs> literally when they're like, oh, but when you were 19, you did this thing that hurt me. Ah, I'm sorry. I forgive myself. Yeah. I forgive you. <laughs> we go closed. Literally, it's like, it's not that deep. You're 19. Like, these are literally. People, like, like it's, you didn't do anything that terrible. So right. th- there's that kind of element with that. Yeah. And um, on the boundary side of things, um, I, it's an interesting one because like I, you won't be surprised in giving what I do. Like it's been a journey for me as well. Like I've definitely got an unhealthy relationship with work. I accept it. Um, I'm able to better manage it because I accept it. Um, this is who I am. My sense of self is very tied to what I do and who I do it with and how um, it's also not the only thing that is definitive. So I have a bit more balance through just the experiences I've had. I think um, I've also worked in roles where the reason I know that's my personality, like, like I, so I used to be a corporate lawyer back in the duh. Oh, um, just throw that one out there. Uh, yeah. You know, in a different <laughs> life, like studied law at university and trained as a, as a solicitor or or a, a lawyer at a big corporate law firm. So you're doing like 78 wow. hour weeks. Like, Oof. you know, this is back in, this is ages ago when I was like, you know, 21, 22. Um, and yeah, like even then the hustle was real and I didn't even like what I did or who I did it with, but mama didn't raise no punk. So like, you have to, <laughs> like, I'm here to win. Let's go. Yeah. But also like the, the, what it extracts from you to do that in an environment that you don't, you're not even being validated. Like, I don't like the work. Mm. I don't like who I work with. I don't like my colleagues. I don't think there's meaning in what I do. And yet I'm doing 78 hour weeks and coming in on the occasional weekend. Like, what are we doing? So I've always been like that. Now there's a sense of, well, life is too short to do work that means nothing to me so I'm going to be someone who has like a that kind of relationship with work I have to do things that at least speak to me on some level and some of those levels may be superficial and some of those will be really deep and that's okay like I am who I am I'm not I'm not not trying to fight it I'm just a baby boy I'm just a dickhead in recovery as as people I love have coined that phrase Um, I'm just trying my best and yeah so I think it's been a journey from working at some of the most demanding environments. Like I've, you know, I worked at a company called WeWork, who a lot of people might have heard of. And it's another co-working company or a co-working giant who grew like crazy, um, failed in like an IPO effort 
I think in 2019 and then eventually went public. Um, I think in maybe two or three years ago at a much lower um, valuation. And um, there's a lot of notoriety and so on about, about that company. But I, in 2015, 2016, 2017, when I was there, I was a lot younger and it was my big step up to this like big, heavily invested American company with these like rock star co-founders that mm. were on the front cover of Forbes and all over the place. And um, yeah, you know, flying to you know, an American company and flying to New York and, I'm, you know, helping us expand in Asia and Australia and across Europe and flying around. And it's like the first VP level role eventually. And you're kind of like, um, like by the end of my time there, I was at VP level and you're kind of, yeah, like I'm being um, validated by the work I do and who I do it with. But it's also like very um, up and down. It's very, um, how can you describe it? Like it's a lot of <laughs> ambiguity. You just went. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Something visceral happens to me when I talk about we work. Um, it's 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 wild. Like it's kind of like you're very the Nigerian. Came out. It just came out. Literally, you know, <laughs> Azuka like... came out. Jason was talking. Azuka. That Azuka came out. That's that's my middle name for anyone. It's like this is Azuka. Um, and yeah, like just the ambiguity and things changing, things not making sense, and like that being normalized. But then the hu- dizzying highs was the best of it. So I was such a mark at that age for like this is my golden opportunity to really level up my career. I do love what I do but I do have a very unhealthy relationship with work. So they're like, you know, close to that like breakdown levels of like just overworking. Mm-hmm. And since then kind of just, again, doing consulting work helps, but doesn't because, you know, there's a different kind of stress around how you make your money. Like I don't have one boss now. I have like dozens of bosses kind of like, again, I'm my own boss. Right. But really like, you know, I have these dozens of stakeholders at least mm-hmm. who I'm responsible to. And you feel that pressure to deliver for. And so yeah, it's been a bit of a journey, even for me personally, with my relationship with work, um, how I value it, how I see myself. And I think I've had to like help a lot of people put in boundaries or implement boundaries, even around like, firstly, like what your work is, if you work in a kind of high, um, high performing environment, where it's like grow, 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 like you're not in a company that's ticking over, you're not in no disrespect, you know, like O2 or something. Like, O2 is O2, they've won. Like, they're just keep selling <laughs> contracts, it's fine. When you're trying to build <laughs> yeah. something, like ne- next year has to be better than last year and not in a, you know, in a proper, like we have to grow exponentially to get to where we want to get to. Like there's real pressure. And yeah, like companies tell you who they are. So I've even in my roles working for companies, I've been very honest when people have asked for, you know, a talk, like can we go for, a, can I have a quick chat? We go for a walk around the block and they're like, I'm just, you know, I'm so unhappy, I'm just so stressed and anxious and feel like I'm burning out and this and that so and so people, on. People get you for that. So if you're working as a yeah. GP of, of people, they would actually so lot, be like, yeah, have a chat. So a lot of companies I've worked for in my role, like I've proactively like recruited so much of the team. So their first po- point of contact within the company has been me. Would be you. So you, yeah. And then you onboard them and I'm kind mm. of senior and, you know, have a status that they might see as like significant in the company but Mm -hmm. I'm not technically their boss Mm -hmm, but they mm -hmm. they will go be head of brand and report into the chief brand officer or chief marketing officer or whatever so I'm like a senior person in the business but they're not my direct report they don't report into me so I'm kind of like you have influence you're also a buddy because I met you before I came here and you kind of like and that's and that's the responsibility that comes with it as well because you kind of convince people to come to a place and then you want to deliver on it being something that they actually enjoy being at and where they're fulfilled as in as far as possible so yeah people be like I, I don't think it's usual I think people typically are not very trusting of HR and people um people who work in people um but people seem to trust me which is good and yeah I go for a walk around the block and like this is in the sanctum of trust that everything we say is like this was never discussed once we go back into the office like I never said this to you you never said right. anything to me and I forget about it right. but yeah, like this company is what it is and it's like a tidal wave and it's going to wash over you. So either you get busy embracing the waves and just crashing with them and let them take you to where they're going to take you and where you're going to wash up or get the hell out of the way of the tidal wave. Oh and my goodness. My thing is, <laughs> so my I boundary advice is bounce. Like if you I... can't deal with what it is, leave. Like, and not in a I... sort of, that sounded a little, a little aggy, like, well, leave, you don't like it. No, genuinely, no, no, no you should go. You should Your go. health yeah. is the most important. Your family, yeah. the people, yeah. things you care about. You're not being fulfilled here. 
this company is not going to change. You have to change. Oof, just the honest I, truth. Should I tell you why I really love that is because literally what you've just said can apply to everything. It can apply to families. It can apply, apply to friends. Because what you're saying is, listen, how you feel about it is how you feel about it. But the situation, that's not necessarily going to change. Oftentimes we go into these relationships, whether it's families or work or whatever, and we're wanting to change the situation because it makes us uncomfortable or because we don't like it or because we're not thriving there or because it doesn't, you know, match with our values and like the things that we thought it would be. It's like, oh, further down the line, it's not. But actually what you're saying is you have two options. Ride the wave because this is what it is. Or if it's too much for you, take your sanity. <laughs> There's nothing more important. What are we doing? Take your health. <laughs> take your mind. Yeah. And get the hell out. Get out. The escape, like stay, exit stage left. Literally. And then there's the middle. And then there's the middle ground of make it work for you. So right. if you have the unhealthy relationship with work that I can have, once you hit that phase of like it's time maybe mm. to start thinking about something different. Mm -hmm. For as long as you're still here make it work for work you for so if there you. are perks here enjoy the perks right. you're going to be in a, you do a nine to six enter it's 59 <laughs> leave 601 601 <laughs> delete slack from your phone don't give anyone your personal number delete whatsapp delete everything yeah. <laughs> leave your laptop at the office you are contract this is what your contract and again maybe now in the modern era it's this kind of quiet quitting or whatever it's like no 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 like some of us love what we do uh that's part of our identity and we want to do the most for our careers for the company for our sense of self for our sense of accomplishment for a dopamine hit whatever it is there are plenty of reasons why people don't just do their 40 hours per week like you're not a bad person if you're quiet quitting you're just doing your job you're just mm -hmm. doing your job um and you're not an amazing person if you have an unhealthy relationship with work that makes you run through walls and do a Hercules impression. Like you're just a different type of person in a different yeah. type of role. Right. But like, unless you are being served by doing the Herculean thing and, and, and unless if you work, if you, if you work at a corporate law firm and you were, you know, a partner or, you know, an associate or whatever, senior associate, whatever it is, you knew what this was. So like, you, you can't quite, you can't quite quit because you knew what this was. You're an, invest, you're an investment banker. You, you made your deal with the devil to work yeah. in this like chronically <laughs> boring profession and <laughs> so you knew what it was <laughs> I say this to who's played, literally you knew what it was <laughs> so you just have to keep what you can't make it work for you this is the work so you yeah. just have to do it until you're ready to bounce but anything else like you've got to scale it back to something yeah. like this isn't where your effort and energy should be going yeah that could be going on to any number of other things and even if you are giving all of that to work in something you love and you're really you know um sort of validated by you still need to what I've learned is keeping work at a distance where I can see it for what it is mm. so instead of it being this thing that's like oh I'm doing so well because I'm flying at work and therefore I'm happy so, ah, so what happens if you're not if you're not doing well at work what right. happens if black unicorn fails does Jason right. die do I just right. perish like right. what's happening here yes. so there needs to be that sort of again it's having yeah. the toolkit where you can switch on and off a little bit it's kind I of that. I love this work it gives me what I need but also it's not the only thing that I have yeah. and I can put it down yeah. and give that energy and attention to my loved ones, to my hobbies, to my pursuits, to just being, to just actually go and sit there and just be, go and lie in the sun, go whatever it bored. is. Yeah. Literally, like he deserves oh, to be bored. <laughs> yay. I love your brain. Like, you know, my <laughs> thing about this entire podcast and when I, like, I love my solo episodes. Like, also, can I yeah. just shout you out? Because like, you literally listen to every episode. <laughs> oh, I love it, you course. for that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want everyone to win. And yes, I told you, people can I, see my review on Apple. I love I you. Yeah, literally, yeah, you, you left a review I and I didn't even know I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> I love you for that. But I was going to make this point about like solo episodes to me are just so healing and just kind of like me just rambling on. But when I think about a good conversation, like I always think about, I just want to, because a lot of people who they would who do podcasts and rightfully so, because that's just the way it works for their podcast. It's kind of like interviews. I'm like, no, 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 no. I just, can I just sit and just get you to brain vom? Like, I just want to hear what's in your, what's in your mind. And I love how you think. I really do. Like, I just, um, I'm blown away every time we speak, honestly, I'm just blown away by you. I, I just love your perspective. I love how, how, um, it's not just one-sided. It's not just about what I do and who I am and how I see it through my lens. It's very much 
well-rounded. And this is also why I just feel like you're perfect for your role. Um, but also I'm not surprised that you're in your role because of your backstory and because of who you are outside of that. Um, and I just, I'm just in awe. Every time you open your mouth and talk about <laughs> you, or we like, I literally, am just like, ah, oh, just everything you say. So let's, let's, let's kind of get, let's round this up a little bit, because I feel like we would just talk for ages and there's so much yeah. I really want to ask you, but who are you outside? Who's Jason outside of work, outside of, you know, family, who, who would you say you are to the core of you? How would you, if, if v, VP of people wasn't a thing and if Black Unicorn wasn't a thing and if Charlotte wasn't in the picture. Hi, Charlotte, by the way. We love you. Uh, <laughs> you <do. laughs> um, yeah, I love her too. Can we share? <laughs> She's gorgeous. Um, <laughs> fight me for it. Actually, I can't even compete because you take her on freaking like 10,000 holidays a year. I'd be like, just just come and sit with me. Can we just do uh, like podcasts? <laughs> like, how boring. We, we, yeah, we, we go on some good holidays together. Uh, we do. You, you guys yeah. are literally always away. I love it. Um, but who is the Jason that you would want people to know? Who would you want? Well, how would you want people to remember you? Like who, who are you really outside of everything else we've talked about today? I think like to be really, to distill it, like I'm just a gentle babe. Like I'm, I'm just a gentle, gentle boy. Like I've learned a lot. I have some defense mechanisms and some armor and some, protective stuff um I, you know like i have other gears i'm not just unfortunately a baby um a gentle boy only but at my core um i certainly was and i'm very sort of optimistic and very pragmatic in my outlook and how i see the world so i see things i just kind of want everyone to do well and i don't see why obviously practically understand the way the world works, but I genuinely like, I just want everyone to do well. I just want everyone to be okay. I just want everyone to get what they need. And I just want to like have good conversations and good food with good people and play video games and drive fast cars and go on holidays. And <laughs> just, I just want good vibes like yeah. around that's, that's me at my core. Like I just want to be seen and held. I want to see and hold other people that I care about. I want I'm someone I like, people who like I really connect with. And yeah, like that's at my core, like just just a gentle boy, like just a little, yeah, just a just a gentle babe. A baby that's, that's boy. Me, just I love a baby it. boy. Just a baby and, boy. And and how are you nowadays? Yeah, how am I? I mean, I feel good right now. I'm just back from shock a trip uh um, to Italy <laughs> I know um, <laughs> again um, <laughs> um we spent some time in Rome which was incredible but um we went to Sicily for my goddaughter's wedding and um, wedding lol that's way too soon my goddaughter's <laughs> yeah. christening um my best friend's daughter's christening and um so yeah you know get all your vitamins from that like, time with family in Sicily he, he has family in Sicily so I kind of got a touch of that experience that he grew up with um he would probably relate to a lot of what we talked about in terms of his growth upbringing and challenges he's faced so it was really good to just see the family away from some of the more challenging spaces that he grew up in that he also got to experience in Sicily like that's kind of where he gets his probably got his vitamins and got what he needed growing up. I'm really glad he had that and I got to see it. So I feel really good, you know, come back from a trip. It was in that sort of diminishing returns that you know, give me, give me a few more days and I'll be the grumpy martyr. Oh, so I have to do so much work and have to do everything and oh, building a company's hard and boo hoo hoo. I'll be back to that. But right now I'm kind of good vibes and positive. Um, I'm good. I feel really like, clearing what I need to do, especially with like building the company and, and, you know, next phases work-wise, I feel very supported and validated by the community that I'm building in that, which is incredible because I'm increasingly realizing even through this conversation with you, like it's that kinship and it's those shared experiences. That's, that's the puzzle that I know best and such a range of people in that space 
who have resonant experiences and yeah, like I want us all to win. And I think we can help people around us to win together, like by doing more together and building this. So I feel really energized by that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I feel, I feel good. I feel, you know, I feel, feel tired, feel the usual, but also I feel good. I think as long as it's in service of like where you want to be and as long as you take a step back when you need to, it's calm. Like it's, it's all good. And otherwise, well hydrated, well moisturized, you know, <laughs> you're always um, well moisturized. <laughs> <laughs> I try. But on, well, on that note of how you are, I mean, I know that you know this already, but you know, I'm here. If you ever need to talk about it, you know that. And I know you're I there too. Hardly, because yeah, you're never say. in the country, but you know, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> but I'm just a voice note away. I'm just a FaceTime You are, away. you are. <laughs> but I, I want to intentionally create that space for us. You know, I know that we already have that anyway, but I just, I need to solidify that, you know, because it can be very easy to be like, I'm good. I, I'm good. I'm, you know, and now when people ask me how I am, I literally tell them. Yeah. The truth. I'm like, if that's not what you wanted to hear, you shouldn't have asked. <laughs> you know? 100%. Yeah. Um, and, and even from their responses, I'm able to be like, okay, well, next time, yeah, not the one I'm going to tell. So it's okay. <laughs> it's just next time I'll just sound fine. <laughs> yeah. Right. But you know that we have that. And I just want to solidify that, you know, that, you know, I, I respect everything you're doing. I respect that you already know how I feel about you. Literally, this conversation is just one of many that we've had. Um, but however you are, we, there is space here for us. So just so you know that. Thank okay. You. That so means I've a got, lot. Thank you. Aw, you're welcome. I've got a few last questions for you. Um, okay. who's been your biggest influence? Who's that one person that you can say has been your biggest influence or most significant influence? Mm, wow. Okay. I think the answer to that question is, um, I think the answer to that question is someone I've mentioned to you a few times, so you won't be surprised to hear this. Um, and I'm kind of like, he not hesitant, but like I'm, I try not to put people on pedestals, even if I really respect and appreciate and I'm inspired by them just because everyone deserves the room to just be a human being who is fallible. And I think when you put people on a pedestal, it's kind of a, and I, and I don't think I put this person on a pedestal. I think I respect this like boundary and this balance. Um, but uh, Kelechi Okafor um, or Kelechnikov um, on social media and everywhere else, very much a multi-hyphenate and definitely a baby girl. Um <laughs> And a few other phrases I've probably borrowed that she uses. <laughs> um, but no, she has been huge in, I think, my journey, probably in my 30s, I think around um, definitely seeking therapy and shaking off the, ah, but you've built all of this yourself. Like, you know, if you go, if you, will I lose my superpowers if I go to therapy? Like, I'm clearly steeled and able to, like, you know, sort of Hercules my way through everything, will I almost like undo the spell of one of my greatest strengths by seeking out therapy? And it was uncomfortable to start with, but around some of the things I've mentioned in this episode, like a lot of things to unpack. Um, and yeah, like she was a huge inspiration in that. And I think, you know, she's a very vocal person with, you know, a platform and a following who speak like literally if i listen to her podcast or you know see something on instagram my partner um charlotte will tell you like we've made we've said this made the same jokes or made or seen this had the same outlook on the thing before her podcast even comes out and then charlotte will <laughs> listen to the podcast and like, oh my god like are you what's wrong like what is this are you two like weirdly <laughs> and it's just like i think we just see that and similar yeah. experiences similar sense of yeah like i see the world really differently to some and um yeah, I think she's, I'm sure like a lot of people feel the same way, but I think she's been really great for a lot of people. Um, yeah, 
And but I want, but I'd like to make a special mention of you though. I will say that every time I listen to the podcast, like it reminds me of things that I know that I'm not telling myself. Again, that toolkit thing, like you help me to like kind of focus up and either give myself grace or give myself the boost I need to like carry on with whatever I need to do, whether it's work related or personal. Um, and that's been really huge as well as like your openness. I think you've been very open in a way that I hope is cathartic for you, but also like a lot of people are going to be feel seen and are going to resonate and do resonate with that. And I think, yeah, it's a huge thing to like acknowledge and, and um, to acknowledge like, um, yeah. So yeah. And it's been a special mention as well. Thank you for adding me to the back of that. Um, <laughs> I always give you pride of pace. People remember the end. Yeah. People remember the end. Yeah. <laughs> Bury the lead. But the thing about Kalichi, I completely agree because actually I remember from Huckle Tree days, from 2018 or whenever it was that we actually met, you were telling me, I didn't even know what podcasts were. You were telling me about her podcasts and you know, I, I completely see how I, everything you're saying, like now that I know of her, I've actually listened to a podcast, which is what, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, just seeing the progress <laughs> and the, the commitment and everything else. Like I totally hear you and I completely see the influence that that's had on you, certainly with the th- going down the route of therapy, which has obviously been huge. If she was listening, what would you want her to know? She's a phenom she's phenomenal and um yeah keep keep doing what you're doing like keep keep moving forward in the way that you need to um you're supported you're loved you're protected and yeah i think especially for a lot of black british people but also like such a range of people like she has such a breadth in terms of who resonates with what she has to say and um what her scope looks like but I think some of the most important things you can do is make people feel seen and feel like sane Mm. (laughs) based on like saying what maybe you might think and then sort of tell yourself no like it's probably not that that's probably me it's probably just me I'm being stupid and for someone to be like no no (laughs) all of you are like these are experiences that are honest and happening and I think even if that's all that happens for some people, that's so important. You do this. Like, do you, you feel seen? Like, in a, oh, you know, I have this issue with my family. I have this issue with, like, you know, my sense of self and the experiences I've had, but maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the problem. And it's like, no, no, no. Like, you're not the only one experiencing it. And also, like, again, build the puzzle around you. It's that community. And I think, yeah. you know, we're a few years down the line now, but back in 2018, Kalechi was, like, louding up the thing in terms of, like, people's experiences and, at what it's like living in this Babylon in a way that feels like much more normalized now. So not normal, so not normal, but much more, you know, a lot of people are sort of, you know, we've, we've evolved, but she was loud and to her detriment <laughs> sometimes, right? Because some people don't like to hear that. And, you know, she's, there's a cost to how honest and how much she sets her mind out there. And I see it. I, it's really important um, it's important for her. I think similarly, I'm sure it's very cathartic for her to speak through her experiences on her platforms. Because similar, similarly, it's like this world is wild, and I feel like I'm. I feel, sometimes I feel like I'm the only sane person in it. Am I the only sane person in it? And then, is like, it someone me? is it just me? Like, does none of this make any, any sense? sense? And then, like, someone with that reach and that, you know, just honestly says, it, and you're like, okay. And then you realize how many people follow and listen. And you're like, okay, cool. We might not always run out and just, hey, I think everything's crazy. Do you? Yeah, me too. Like, you might not do that. But you feel that sense of kinship and like, okay, like you're not the only one thinking this way. And, you know, we're one step closer to surviving it or improving it by being together, doing it together. Um, so yeah, this is great work. And um, yeah, I think keep doing what you're doing. But also like if it becomes long and at some point you're like, this is not for me, I'm not doing this anymore. Don't do it anymore. Do what we're Yeah. Doing. Yeah. I, oh, I love that. So I, your love costs. that. <laughs> I, actually, I actually hope she hears that because that's actually... My goodness, that that's amazing. I actually really do hope she hears it. Um, but Jay, this has been I can't even explain it. <laughs> this has been so good. It's been not just so good, it's been so needed. 
you know, like I feel like when I'm in conversation with you, I always feel like people just need to hear you speak. Like people need to hear. Like I remember before you started making videos and like Charlotte and I were just mm-hmm. like, come on, Jay. So like, we, like there's just <laughs> so much. Come on. Yeah. Like there's just so much that you, you, you give. There's so much you offer. There's like, there's a certain perspective, um, you know, that's very rare actually. Um, I almost feel like you are very in touch with, all aspects of you, the soft side of you, the, the loud side of you, the I'm taking up space, the bit that needs to, you know, like you just, you're so self-aware, but not just about yourself, about the world around you. And I just, I'm so in awe. I, I just always am. So I'm really glad that we did this episode. I really am because it's one that I know for sure. I will watch back and just be like, <laughs> okay, I'm not, I'm not even like not editing, not anything. I'm literally going to watch it back just to hear your advice. Again. <laughs> wow. Just to hear your perspective again, which is rare. Cause I don't really watch my, my stuff. I don't really listen to my, once it's out there, I'm like, yep. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I did it. It's done. I'm I the same. It. Literally. So <laughs> yeah. I, that's a huge compliment. I'm hearing <laughs> that. I'm listening to that because I'm the same. I don't want to like it's done. It's for everybody else. I'm yes, good. I don't need exactly. to look at it anymore. Exactly. Wow. Thank so, you. I'm excited for the future and for Black Unicorn. Um, obviously, the website is blackunicorn.com, but you have this huge email list and you send some gems out. I, I'm on your. I'm. I'm on your part of your newsletter. I'm signed up and I receive all the lovely gems. And actually, you did have one uh, newsletter on um, setting boundaries. So, yeah, so that that was really useful, actually. I, I found that very, honestly, I found that very useful. So um, I would urge everyone that's listening to go ahead and subscribe. I'll leave all of your links, obviously, in the show notes. If you're listening on Spotify, Apple, iHeartRadio, wherever you're listening, all of Jason's links would be there for his newsletter, but also for the website, for Instagram and everything else that you're doing. Um, So what's, what's next? What's the plan? What's the, what does the future hold for Jason (laughs) Ture? So yeah, I, I mean, at the moment I'm, so we have for the future of Black Unicorn that, like I say, like a network for connecting and supporting people who work for consumer startups. we have like a we have some founding members we have 100 founding members who are believe in what we're we're building who are exactly you know emblematic of the kind of people that we're building it for and want to contribute as well as receive and um yeah they're working with us as we sort of test our pilot of programming and what we're going to provide and lay on for that networking, you know, and connection and that support. Um, they're being part of that, that pilot. And we're so I'm currently planning an event in New York, um, where like 75% of our members are um next month, um, which is really exciting and yeah, lots to do and lots to bring together. Um, but I'm really excited about that. I'll be in LA the week before. Um, say the other 25% of our members are West Coast based, so we'll have a smaller gathering of maybe 15 or 20 people there as well. So that's a big thing that is like the next step that I'm quite taking up a lot of my space, headspace and thoughts and planning right now. Um, and we're planning to all going well, do a sort of pilot of our programming starting in September, probably for like one to three months, like a, a sort of pilot to test and see what works and get feedback ahead of hopefully um, soft launching in at the beginning of next year. So that's kind of taking up a lot of my focus and resources and time and energy, but it's really, really exciting. And I feel very yeah motivated by all of that. Otherwise, hopefully a few more holidays in between traveling <laughs> between the UK and the States for business. Um, and yeah like let's see let's see what else hopefully some more exciting things will will happen before this year is out ahead of whatever lays ahead next year and beyond yeah Yeah. we've got time but i'm i'm so excited for all of it for you honestly i i just can't wait to see you grow from strength to strength (laughs) as uh as you walk this path that's been uh laid out for you and that you know you've chosen and i'm just so so pleased and even just honored really to even be considered one of your friends or people in your circle and 
somebody who gets to hear you speak every now and again. So even if they're like one-to-one conversations, but thank you so very much for doing this. And we obviously have to have you back. Like, hello. Yeah. I'm, I'm down. I'm down. Um, no, thank you. Thank you for creating this space, doing all the work that goes into it, being so vulnerable and authentic, um, for being a wonderful friend, um, an incredible physio, because um, this guy keeps breaking down and occasionally he needs, <laughs> he needs help. Um, and, you know, my old weary millennial bones. <laughs> and um no you're i'm very inspired by you you're doing incredible work and yeah i feel very honored and privileged to to have been on this episode with you and to take one of our wild me- meandering conversations um <laughs> into the digivas into people's ears <laughs> opening so you can see our, yeah listen you can see our crazy stream of consciousness <laughs> Damn. <hopefully>. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you for listening everybody <laughs> so it was a wild ride <laughs> damn no it was great it was so good i appreciate it thank you so much jay well 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 (laughs) this episode definitely did not disappoint it was everything i needed it to be i always love just sitting down and having a chat with very intelligent people. And Jason is one of the most intelligent people I know. I feel like the episode has done all the work for us. Like there's just, there's nothing else I need to say. So I'm going to say this, that you should follow Jason, check out the link in my show notes or on YouTube in the description box for Jason's links. Please follow him. Definitely give him a follow. And please follow Life Herself podcast. Okay. So if you're listening on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple, any podcast platform, Podbean, wherever, please follow and please leave a review so that other people can have access to this good source of information that you do and hopefully get some value from it as well. If you're watching on YouTube, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will love you forever. And we also now have a newsletter. So make sure you check out the show notes for the link to the newsletter. In case you're feeling lazy, all of these links would be within my link tree link. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye guys.